anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. It's the best round show. Like my brother says, you can come fight us now or you can fight down the line where we're going to be 100 times better. So up to you guys. Ferocious Harry Bacheron! Demanded he put it on Lucas Almeida. I'm Samoan. I can crack. Uh, he should have shook my hand at weigh-ins. That's what happens. Andre Kachi Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're out of here. All right, welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, Matt and I, together again, I was away last week. Happy to be back in the presence of Matt Serra. Interesting show today, Matt. We got Fareed Basharat, great undefeated uh, bantamweight, coming off a, a very impressive decision win. And Andre Feely, who uh, was supposed to be on, I think, last week, but we had a scheduling uh, glitch after that unbelievable knockout of uh, Lucas Almeida. Yeah, that, uh, was so a good night. that was a good night in the office. This morning, on my way to Sarah BJJ, Huntington, New York, Long Island, you know, Long Island, New York. Sure. Uh, I was... I was listening to you on Joe Rogan. Oh, okay. Very Thank good. You. Nice. Good appearance. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, I love Joe. Hey. I hadn't seen him in so long. Yeah, it was a really nice appearance. I like that. You seem like old friends and catching up. And it's good. There's it no is. There's, it's just fun. It's a hang. It's like with Joe, it's it's weird. Like, I, I mean, I literally do know him for 30 years. I mean, we our first gig together, I think, was 1992 in, in like Lake Apatcon, New Jersey. And we've always uh you know uh, you know been been uh friends and kind of connected throughout the year you know so it's one of those things where he's just a comfortable guy to talk to and he's a great interviewer because he doesn't he doesn't sit there and try to find questions he just talks and you just you yeah. have a conversation about something it's great a hundred percent my favorite part is when you mentioned me i did mention you very favorably by the way yeah it made me happy i forget that i like because uh, i talked about my jarmillo and this uh uh, this kid Martin, who's a blue belt that, that I train with a lot, and you forget that when you say someone's name on Rogan, they always find out. I've been getting texts and emails from people who I mentioned. Like it's it's one you of those things. Mike? You mentioned Mike's name. I did, yeah. I mean, I really he's so good, and, and he's such a good That's trainer, great. and and he's that really was, a fucking good man. He's a very fucking uh, he's a great instructor. Who to, who who told you to go train with him? Um, it's funny. I, I I spoke to Master Henzo, and he said that I should come in. All right, I'm lying. I just wanted to make you jealous. It was Matt Serra. Yeah, who, I'm not Matt trying to. Why am, I, why am I going to make it about me? It's not about me. I'm <laughs> just okay. saying. But it I was knew, you. I knew, though. You were I right. That this would be the guy for you. You were right. And 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 Jamie. I love Jamie Crowder. Uh, Jamie English, who I do uh, uh, two days a week of Muay Thai with. He's very good for. He does a lot of stuff on takedowns and takedown defense and breaking like body locks that people get standing. Like, there's a lot of shit that will happen in a bar that because he was a bouncer for so many years that Jamie covers, um, you know, tie clinches and how to break a tie clinch and how, you know, fucking uh, when you're swimming your hands in to get uh, head control, really good stuff. So I, I, I just get too tired, man. Very tuckered out. You're becoming like a human weapon. You're like the next Jeff Speakman. I don't know who that is. He was in a movie called The Perfect Weapon in the 80s. Oh. Back in the Kenpo. But I've been doing something that nobody seems to like at the academy. What do you that do? Whenever, whenever I get ready to train, I go, yeah! You do not. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you've been checking the oil on everybody. Don't do oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. I check my own oil. They hate that even more. Because <laughs> I'm so happy when I'm doing it. <laughs> have you seen Enzo or no lately? I have not. Um, I, I I saw him when he when he promoted Jamie to black belt. But Henzo does come in, but he's always there at different uh, hours that I'm there. I'm in, I'm there at very specific times because of my schedule because I have to come home and see you, um, which is always a delight. And did you, uh, did you yes. play? Uh, did you play his theater out there? Did you do his? I did a couple spots. Joe, had, uh, we knew I was going on the podcast, and so I did. Uh, three spots at his club the comedy mothership is such a great room i am there again doing full headline sets in march i think 15th 16th i'm yeah 15th right before uh st patty's day i'm, I'm back headlining there oh, um 
That's so nice. Tour. Hey, yeah, I'm traveling really quick. Uh, and this our producer should know this. I'm not going to be here for the next episode. I'll be with two of our favorite people, Dean Thomas and Dana White. Wow. And we're doing the show that never died. Looking for Dana White looking for a fight. I'll okay. be in, I'll be in Toronto. Oh, that's nice. I'm invading Toronto. You should go up in the um Dana's afraid of heights, right? That's right. So you guys got to do that Ed that what I forget what it's called that that uh Edge the, the, the CN Tower thing. I've been to the yeah. top of it, but I won't do that walk out. It's fucking terrifying. There's a rumor that I might be doing that with Dean Thomas. I'm not sure. You know, but uh, all I know is we got Fareed in the waiting room. We can't let Fareed wait. No, we shouldn't let him wait after a win. By the way, we and we could talk with uh, maybe after Fareed or with Fareed about the the rest of that card too. There was uh, some really really interesting uh, fights. I, I'll uh, I'll wait till Fareed is in. But that Johnny Walker uh, Ankalaya fight. Oof. All right, let's bring in uh, Fareed Basharad. Punched um, in the, he got punched in the nose. Oh, yeah, he got he got. Hey, 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 hey Farid, how you doing? Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? Hey, nice to I'm meet you, Farid. Uh, it's a it's an honor to meet you guys. Hey, Great job! Congrats on the fight. Thank you, thank you so much. The um, it was really uh, you said that he was going to be, or you kind of anticipated uh, uh, Lapilus being your toughest opponent yet um did it turn out that that is exactly what the case was yeah definitely i think so um i think he he was definitely my my toughest opponent today and i think he'll probably be my toughest opponent maybe for the next uh as possible unless they give me a a, a, a um a rapid like imp like a top 15 guy next or something i think he i think lapilus was top 15 caliber so um over in Europe, we knew how good he was. You know, he was he was like he had like three Euro European belts uh, at the same time. Um, so, yeah, he's legit. I definitely think he's my best. Oh, oh, sorry for his takedown defense was so unbelievably good. And even when you got him down, it just seemed like he like uh, I, I think Bisping would say how he just wouldn't accept the takedown. He was always uh, 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 trying to get back up until I think the end of the second, and then in the end of the third, you kind of imposed your will. Did you know that was coming with him, or did he surprise you with that? I did. I, I did know it was coming, especially uh, with my team. We said he was going to be very tough to take down in the beginning. Um, he's got very good anti wrestling, like anti grappling. He used. He's got insane reach. You know, super long arms. So he kind of uses them to just post on the back of your head or post on the floor, and it just it kind of gets to a position. Like there was one position where he was. We were, he was like doing like the flag. He had both arms. Uh, posted on the floor, and I had his legs up, and I'm just trying to pull him into the middle of the of the octagon, trying to engage him in a in a grappling match. But he he did a good job, and he was athletic, and he was very patient, and and I would even say he was very negative. You know, um, sometimes it's tough to 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 get some offense done when one guy is just trying to survive, and I feel like that was his thing. He was just trying to survive, not get taken down, not get hit, and um, you know. But I, I feel like I made it look clean. No, yeah. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I wanted to jump in here and just I, I see that over at Extreme Couture. Your your grappling coach over there is Jake Shields, the great Jake Shields. Yeah. Now yeah. that's I like to give Jake Shields a shout out. He's he's an old friend of mine, and he is one of the most underrated fighters there is yes. out there. He's yes. phenomenal. People know. I mean, dude, he's got a win over Dan Henderson. I mean, Lawler, uh, he beat Lawler. He had a good fight with George St. Pierre. That yeah, went the yeah. distance that people said that could have went either way. Uh, yeah. He's just he's a phenomenal yeah. fighter. You know what he's going to do. He's going to take you down. He's going to mount you. His jujitsu is, I'm not saying simple. I'm saying simple in the best way possible. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm going to take you down, mount you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to get one arm up. You're not getting out. I love yeah. it. I love it, man. I, uh, how's it, how is it working with Jake Shields? Uh, it's amazing working with Jake. You know, since my brother and I came over to the States two years ago, um, we were lucky enough to work with him straight away. We And we even back when we were in London, we said to ourselves, uh, if we could go over to the States and work with Jake, that would be number one, the number one guy on our, on our list because because his jujitsu is just so fundamentally sound, like you said, and it's just perfect for MMA. It takes away a lot of the... You know, I, I feel like jiu-jitsu in some ways has become a little bit too crafty with some of the leg locks and some of the sweeps. 
Jake is just, I'm going to smush you. I'm going to grab your, I'm going to go chest on chest. I'm going to pass you. I'm going to get to mount. If you give me your back, I'm going to take your back. I'm going to choke you. And, and for, look what he's done with me and my brother, to be honest. Like, we didn't have this kind of game, but now we have this kind of similar smothering uh, type of grappling game. So, um, yeah, that's that's all Jake. You know, Jake has been big for us. Can I also add, Jimmy, that Jake Shields has a a, a win over Damian Maya and, and Tyron and, Woodley and Tyron, yeah. and Tyron yeah. Woodley, which is yeah. impressive. But Damian Maya, you know, he beat him at his own game, which is jujitsu, yeah. because Jake is a very he's, he's got a very strong um, wrestling foundation too. So he's mm -hmm. very good on top, and he was able that the, the exchanges with him and Damian Maya is a very it's it's the equivalent of watching a very skilled boxing match. Yeah, 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 you don't get that KO, but you get wow, man! I love watching that. I'm gonna watch that again. That's a fun one. Yeah, Jake yeah. Shields, with Jamie and Maya. But go ahead, I, anyway. I know I, I like. Fight. I like after your fight when you're like. A lot of times, it's really good to have somebody's name. It's good for promotion, but I also like when you're saying anyone could get it. <laughs> that's the attitude. <laughs> when it's somebody, anyone can get it. That's yeah. great. Man. I like yeah. that. Did you change yeah. your mind? Did, you, did any name pop in your head that you want to smash or? No, you know, that's the reason why I said anyone can get it is because I tried to be super like respectful in my head in the beginning and like, all right, like be proper for it, you know, like, you know, if you don't have anybody in mind, just be cool. And then I was just like, I was like, honestly, anyone can get it. Anybody in this weight division, because I feel like I'm the guy right now, like I'm just getting better and, and there wasn't nobody on the top of my head. So I was just, I figured like, it does, like in my mind, it really truly doesn't matter who they put up against me. I've, I'm so confident in my abilities that I'm going to beat them, and and that's that's just what I was thinking. Was uh, you know I'll, I'll take on anybody right now. And you threw beautiful, beautiful uh, kicks, uh, 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 beautiful leg kicks, beautiful calf kicks, and I love you threw an axe uh, kick. Did you hit him with that? No, I just missed. I just missed. Um, I was yeah. I, I started off with a lot of kicks, and I saw that he was. Uh, um, he was he was like reacting to a lot of the kicks with his hands and so I, I figured you know what let me just throw something very unorthodox from the off let him know what kind of fight this can be you know if he's not paying attention i'm gonna i'm gonna do some wild stuff in there so yeah that's my taekwondo base kicking in and i think johnny walker threw one uh against anka live as well i don't think i've ever seen two of those thrown on the same uh card and as a person whose kicks are terrible speaking for myself <laughs> I, my kicks are not good at all they're fucking they flail they're just terrible the idea of an axe kick actually being effective it, it's almost incomprehensible to me that somebody can throw that kick it looks so difficult to get momentum up and down i mean have you had success with it i have yeah in, in the practice room especially in, in sparring I, I try not to throw it uh the fight is really the only time where i can throw it with full intent because it's such a it's a nasty move because the idea is to 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 like swing them with your hip like to hit them with your heel you know and it could be real nasty i've i've knocked people out with it before in practice when i was younger you know um now like i know i can land it it's, i don't need to hurt my training partner with it but in the fight it was super close and and had it landed i think it would have done some some crazy damage yeah, I think one of those guys said that it, it nicked him, but it didn't look like it did. But I'm like, oh, maybe it, it, it hit him a little bit on the way. But I'm glad to hear that it uh, it didn't. Um, I was gonna say, Jimmy, come back. you know, you grew up in you. Grew, how old were you when you moved to England with your family? Uh, I was three or four. Okay, all right. So you yeah. grew up. You grew up. I grew up in London. Yeah, yeah oh, I grew up in London. London. Well, now, where? How did you first get involved in the arts? What was the first discipline? Uh, so first, initially, when I was like seven, my dad put me in uh, Taekwondo, just as self de self defense. And uh, I actually, funny enough, I hated it at the time. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even enjoy it. I just wanted to stay at home and watch cartoons, you know. But yeah. it, it, it developed into something. That you started with Taekwondo, and then, yeah. where, and then where, where did it go from there? When did you start getting involved with the rest of the arts? Uh, so actually, I so it was Taekwondo for about four years then i kind of stopped doing martial arts in general completely and just played uh football soccer and mm -hmm. that actually gave i credit a lot of my athletic base to that because of the foot the feet coordination and the leg strength and the cardio i got from that yeah. and then when i was 15 you know like i was just a huge fan of, of mma and the ufc like and even now like i'm i'm just 
I could sit here with you all day, Matt, and we could just throw, talk about throwback fights. I've seen all your fights. I've seen everything, you know. So, um, but I was just a huge fan, and I just wanted to. My brother and I, when I was fifteen, uh, he was sixteen, I think. We just joined our local gym, and um, but and the weird thing, it wasn't like, ah, oh, let's see how this goes. From the beginning, it was like, I want to become the champion. I want to be a Hall of Famer one day. So that kind of just shows what kind of people me and Javid were. Like at that young age, we were, we were so, uh, we knew what we wanted. We were so sure of ourselves. Your, your uh, conditioning is obviously amazing. Your cardio, uh, is, it just looked exhausting time after time, uh, trying to take him down. And, and again, he, he did a great job of sprawling and staying up. Uh, was there any moment where you get discouraged when, it's, when, when you're having a hard time getting somebody down? Obviously, you kept doing it. But internally, they're like, what the fuck do I have to do to pull this guy down? Uh, no, you know, because this fight, we knew it was, that was kind of the game plan. I knew he was going to be tough to take down in the beginning. If you watch all his other fights, nobody's ever taken him down and kept him down. He always pops back up or maybe he doesn't even get taken down sometimes. And uh, and right before I walked out, I said to my brother and Jake and Bowie, and I said to them, like, this is going to be one of those fights where I have to make it. This may have to be not necessary, but it may have to be one of those fights where I have to make myself tired to make him exhausted. I was like, yeah, I, I have to suffer. I have to suffer a little bit so he suffers a lot. And um, I just, and you could see, you know, I shot maybe like I think seven takedowns around, and and I and I had guests to go round four and five to be honest with you. But that's a great way to put. I mean, myself tired to make him exhausted. I guess yeah, you, that's that's a great way to say it. Yeah. Well, that that gets worked out in the training camp. Like if you don't if you if you don't believe in your gas tank, you can't have that strategy. Are you, doing, right. are you doing anything specific? That's what I tell my guys, they, my guys when they're sparring or girls, whoever's in there, they, I'm like, look, you know, I know it's tiring to go for the shots and the takedowns, but this is where you want to do it. You want to start trying to get the tank emptied in here. And mm. that way you get how many and you get how many failed attempts and you're going through it. You might need just one or two in a fight right yes. now. You, have four or five, you know what I mean? So it has to Absolutely. get, people can't be scared to get uh, uh, tired in training. Because it's not a good feeling. It's a horrible feeling. Horrible. But you need to feel it there because the worst thing is to feel it in a fight. You know? It's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, you said it spot on. That's 100% right. Like, um, the worst place to get. The only fear, like, I don't know about you, Matt, when you were fighting, but I never, I don't get scared of getting knocked out. I don't get scared of getting hurt. I'm scared of getting tired. Yeah. To get tired on fight night in front of the whole world, like Dan Gable said it best, like, fatigue makes cowards of, of all men. Fatigue yes. is the worst feeling. You, you can't even put your hands up. You're just flailing mm. around, looking like an idiot. So be because I have that fear in the back of my mind always, I am putting in so much work in the practice room. And 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 my coach is always, and Javid always tells me like, don't be afraid to get tired in training. Never be afraid to get tired in training. We do all our cardio work and our runs and stuff. But in sparring sessions and in the wrestling, if you're just being that guy who's like, I'm just going to win by a point, uh, let him let him shoot on me and I'm going to counter him. No, go shoot. If you fail, it's okay. We're not trying to be the champions in the changing room. We're trying to be a champion on fight. Uh, sorry, in the training room. We're trying to be a champion on fight night. That's when it counts under those bright lights. So try it. Try everything in training. Have you had Have you had a fight where you had that? Because uh, Matt's talked about just uh -huh. those, that moment of exhaustion. And, and have you had that in a fight where like something just hit you wrong and you just, you, you were, were dead tired? No, no. Thank God I, I haven't had it yet in a fight, but boy, have I had it in training like so many times. And that's probably why I haven't had it in a fight yet because from early, I, I understood that it like, this is probably the most important thing in fighting is, is a gas tank. It really is that important is, uh, it, you really can't do anything without it. Like if you're, if, if you're, if you don't have a good gas tank, if you don't trust your gas tank, you're going to be a good fighter for two or three minutes. And then you're going to get found out. That's Everybody Everybody starts strong, but they don't finish strong, you know? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, it, it's very important to work that out in camp. I've, I've said exactly what you said before about not being afraid of getting hurt, but you don't want to get tired in there because there's no place to go. Unfortunately, that has happened to me before in there. Oh, and it's a horrible feeling. <laughs> Especially, it's not bad if you're, if you're a coward, it doesn't suck. You could just tap out. Right. But if, right. You got some, if you got some pride. Yeah. Got to take your lumps and and that's where jujitsu. That's where jujitsu really is. I feel the ultimate, the ultimate martial art. Where 
you know, wrestling, of course, you want the fight where, you know, put it where it's going to be. But when you're dead tired and you're trying to wrestle, it's rough. But with jujitsu, at least defensively, I've had Carol Parisi and when I was dead tired, full-blown rear naked choke, full-blown arm lock after a judo throw. And I even with nothing in the tank, I was able to maneuver myself out from jujitsu. And mm. I, made, I made it through with, with uh, nothing in the tank. But uh, that is the worst feeling in the world. So, but hey, man, you're doing something right. You don't got a yeah. zero yet. So how does Thank it stay? You. How do you, like, when it's not broke, you don't fix it. Are you still just going to be doing the right thing? And are you doing what you're doing because the, there hasn't been a hiccup yet? Or are you constantly just... How can we change this up a little bit? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm de- I'm definitely. It's more of the latter, I think. Like I wanna I wanna keep the good, but I know, I know I'm not deluded. I know I'm not undoubt. I'm not the best fight in the world yet. Undoubtedly the best. I feel like on my day, on my forget about Sean O'Malley. I don't think I definitely don't think Sean O'Malley is the best fight on the planet. Aljo, I train with Aljo a lot. I train with Marab. I know how I do with them. So I know I'm not. Until I'm undoubtedly the best fight on the planet, until I feel like that, then I can go, you know what? Maybe my training methods, all right, now we have a winning formula type of thing. But until I can absolutely run over the Aljos and the Marabs and the yeah. Tohudos and those guys, then I'm, until then, I'm always thinking, all right, what can I take from Aljo? What can I take from Marab? This is what they do well. How do I, how do I take that and put it into my game? And I'm constantly trying to evolve. Like, even right now, I'm, I'm in my car. We just... Uh, I just left the gym because my brother's got a fight coming up in Saudi and uh, we were just working like, okay, this is what you did well in your fight, but look, you, you messed this up a little bit. Let's make this right. So I think um, you have to constantly try, try and evolve because I'm not the best in the world yet. You know, I think, I feel like on my day, I can, I can beat anybody, but I don't want to be beating people on my best day. I want to be pe- beating people on my worst day. All that's right. Very... Now, that's a phenomenon. That's the best yeah. attitude, especially at 26 years old. Now, what about on an off day? What do you do on an off day when you're not training? Mm-hmm. And, you you know, I don't want to hear about the active rest where you're going for a hike with your <laughs> girlfriend. I want to hear about any books you're reading, audio books you're listening to, Netflix shit you're watching, movies you've seen. Talk to me. What do you like to do? Give me a hobby. Uh, um, hobbies for me. Okay, so excluding the hiking, all of this. Okay. You like the uh, hiking? That's I good. play I play video games. Though. I play, I play uh-huh. video games. FIFA, what kind of- FIFA, Call of du- Call of Duty, um, Assassin's Creed, this kind of stuff, and um, I like it. I, and like on FIFA, we, me, me, and all my brothers, we, like I've got four brothers. All of us, we have a. It's called pro clubs. So you create create your own type of character. You hop online, you make your own team, and you're just playing against everybody around the world. And oh, we're just a- talk- we're just talking shit to each other in the microphone. <laughs> it's a that's good way to be- touch with your brothers. That's got to be fun with the soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, Man, it, cool. it's good. It's good. It's good. Wake up. It's funny. We're on the same team, but we're still talking shit to each other. <laughs> that, well, that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it fun for sure. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a gamer too. I do. Yeah. VR, I do VR though. VR. Uh, ah. I got the Meta Quest Three. Really love that shit. Love really. It. Jimmy, Jimmy thinks I'm a little immature, but I love it. I like it. I play chess in it. I mean, I really don't get the full use out of it. It's just me in this quiet room playing chess in, in the metaverse. <laughs> I really am an ass. I should do something like that, but uh, I, I don't like the games. I don't like video games. Yeah. Maybe I can get to VR a little bit. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't suck. I just, I'm not that great at it, and I don't move well. In, it, you know, I just, I'm not coordinated enough for it. Matt, it, Matt well, what, games, what games do you play, Matt, on VR? I'll tell you, I play one game. It's called Population One. It's a little, it might resemble a little Fortnite, but it's not. It's a little, I don't play Fortnite. I don't know. I can't do that thing, but it's got, it's a, it's a, um, a shooter. Your squads of three, you go out, you drop and you got to just eliminate all the other players and, <laughs> and you can climb, you can fucking jump off things and fly. I like to climb and then I get my op, which is the fucking sniper rifle. <laughs> Take them out. I love it. I fucking love it. It's fun. Sounds amazing. Sounds I try, amazing. I'm, I'm going to Toronto to watch the fights, Jimmy. I'm sorry. I'm such a nerd. I, I, I bring it with me. Yeah, downtime in the hotel, you know? Unless, oh, you're, yeah, yeah. Like, unless you're a little former pervert like my buddy here, Jimmy. I can get people <laughs> something delivered to the room. I don't do that shit. I'm a husband <laughs> and a father. It keeps me out of trouble. I just go in the metaverse and kill things. 
I love that. I, I might have to get into that, actually. That sounds amazing. Awesome. Fareed, uh, congratulations. A great fight, 12-0. and 0. I mean, uh, a, a clear uh, win for you. Um, look forward to seeing you fight again. But congrats. That was He was really tough, and he was a really game opponent. And uh, you, looked, you looked great, and uh, I was Thank happy you. to see it. Congrats, Thank man. you so much. Thank you. All I right. appreciate you guys. Hey, it's an honor for me to be on your guys' show. Matt, Thank so you. great to see you again. Thank you. You're a legend. Definitely. All Thank right. you so Three. much, Mick. Come back on again when you get another fight lined up. I would love to. I would love to. Thank oh. you. Thanks a lot, Fareed. Take care. Yeah, Fareed. Take care. Bye. Yeah, that really was a great fight. I was so impressed. Again, Matt, just in my little minimal bit of training, I finally understand how taking someone down or attempting is exhausting. And just watching guys attempt multiple takedowns, it's just, it, it's fucking, it's fascinating to me that anybody can do that more than once. It's, it's brutal. As, as we're talking about video games. Yes. I'm going to text Merkers. <laughs> it's my buddy, Robbie C. I know this my buddy, Robbie. He's one of my purple belts. He uh he lives in South Carolina now. He just moved there. I got him into the VR. So we meet up in there and we murk, me, him, and Edwin. I told him podcast. I'm busy right now. But that is funny. I just got that text now. Are you I gonna get the Facebook the um Apple one, Matt? There's an Apple headset. It's gets expensive, oh, but I, you don't want that. Not for gaming, man. It's for like whatever else. I mean they have games in there, no? Yeah, but not my type of game. I like to get in there and get gritty. Ah, come on. I, I think they have them. Nice, Heine. I'm going to attack my wife later. Oh, that's TMI, nice. TMI, I tell you too much. I don't mind. You're my friend. I like to hear oh, it. Too much. So I'm getting my wife ready for an MMA fight at 40 years yes. old. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fun. Oh, my daughters went over the weekend. My middle one got silver. She did good. You know that's what I mean? That's great. Uh, she survived the triangle attack. She hasn't. Went, she's been doing more dance lately. She's been doing the jiu-jitsu less, but she wanted to jump in. It, it was cute. She did good. And then my oldest firstborn, she killed. She did great. She did the best two out of three with this girl. And she was happy. It's the first time she shot a double. So her wrestling coach was happy and shot in. The girl's a little bigger than yeah. her. She came underneath her. Bah, double leg. Doubles like, are scary when you shoot for you. Always, I'm always afraid I'm going to break my neck. They're hard. They, they like, there's a mentality to shooting a, a double leg. They, they always make me feel like I'm not going to do it right or I'm going to fuck my head up going in. You don't want to get stuck with somebody on top of you, but you know, my kid's 14, man. She's got she could get that shit going. It was great. It was really good. You know, she got another gold medal. And wow. uh, it was fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Look on my story, you'll see a little thing with her. It's her dancing, and then it goes into her jujitsu matches. It's fucking cool. Oh, so yeah, nice. man, things are good at the uh the Sarah household. We're all training. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I also wanted to say too, uh, I have a question for you, Matt, because they've been speculating now Pajeda against Ankalaev. Uh, should that be the main over, uh, Leon Edwards and, um, who's Leon fighting? Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. Strict. Uh, no, no, not strictly. Plus he is next week. Uh, who is Leon fighting? I was reading that before. Uh, oh, Bilal, right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I read something and then I fucking... Why don't oh, I they, they're set, Leon. Oh, that's that's already set. And it's, uh, I believe it is. Let's see. Is it set in stone? Uh, uh, let me see. Some, I wanted to just give some shout outs for the fights over the weekend. Sure, I was just reading this. Hold on. Yes, Matt. Me? No, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm looking for what I was reading before. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I just wanted to give some respect when P Pereira wants to fight Jamal. That's what I'm reading right here. Okay. But Ankalaev is a possibility. Oh, okay. Well, listen, I'm, I'm, wait, what, what do you say about Bilal and Leon? Is that I'm, I'm, what was that fuck was I that. just reading? Let, well, let, let up a dude as a headliner for UFC 300. All right. Yeah. Wait, th that's Bilal Muhammad versus Leon Edwards? Oh, what is he asking us? Like what we'd want uh, to see? Oh, nothing is set uh, for a headline. Okay. It was just oh. speculation. Oh, okay. I, speculation. That's my fault. He, probably, I'm sure, he put it that way in the prep. We get prep sheets, and we just we're reading through them in like ten pages. So you see something, and it just sticks. Um, and I was just thinking of Pajeda against uh, Ankalaev. That's a tough fight for uh, Pajeda, I think. Um, I, I might take Ankalaev in that fight. Uh, mm. 
I don't know. I mean, I, I, my, the thing about Magomed is that he's got the wrestling also. That's phenomenal. Yes. I mean, his stand, he didn't, I mean, his stand up is looking, it's so nasty that yeah. he doesn't feel a need that he has to go for it, but he could, like he showed with Jan Bohovis. Yeah. So, but uh, he did look impressive because Johnny Walker, he came out in that first round looking sharp and aggressive, not showing much respect, but a lot changed between one round. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right next thing you know, like in the second round, Magomed just kind of took over. By the end of the first round, it started shifting big time. He, you could see he had weathered, like I hate to say weathered the storm, but I think they knew that Walker comes out, he's unpredictable, he's unorthodox, and he threw an axe kick, those giant fucking long legs. He's a very tough guy. A lot of spinning back fists, which they said might have worn on him in the fourth and fifth, if it had gone to that. What do you think Walker's doing wrong? Like, he, he's like, I mean, again, he, he got hit by a guy who hits really hard, obviously. But what do you think he needs to, is there something he needs to, to work on or, or, or something he needs to improve in order to avoid these losses? I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. Was he that active to get that? I don't know if he got that tired in between rounds, but he definitely was less active that second round before he got caught. He was more defensive. Yeah. And, uh, yes. You know, it may be, a, it, it's not that that first round, he looked really sharp. And I, even the commentators were mentioning that. If, but he's, if he's going to have that kind of explosive style, you're going to have to have the conditioning to be able to do that for three to five rounds. And it's something happened where maybe Magomed was just finding his rhythm better that second round and found his range. But he, he was, it, was, um, it was offsetting Johnny Walker. And Johnny Walker no longer had the confidence in his strikes. And then that led to his downfall, you know? Yeah. But, do you think maybe uh, he should start a little slower then? Like again, he's had success, but uh had he, a great he, coach, man, and uh uh in Kavanaugh. So I'm sure they're gonna examine it and, and see what's going on with that. Because there's been in times he's been more he's been more um patient in his yeah. recent so I don't know. I you know, he looked to get him out of there. And, and it did, and then some. A lot changed between the first and second round, so they're gonna have to examine that and see what's up. But yeah. I'll tell you what else is up. What's Jim up? Miller. Jim Miller. Oh my God, he won again. Fun man, and yeah, and, uh, great Gabriel Benitez is no joke. He was in the yeah. fight. He was, yeah, he was in there, and he was they trying to go kick for kick and get in there. And uh, but Miller, I think, was winning three rounds oh, to none. I mean, Miller oh, was clearly winning that fight. Oh, a hundred percent, he was winning. And is on his way to winning, and then he's put a stamp on it with that rear naked. They call it a neck crank. Well, it was kind of on the neck, but on the on the jaw, but yeah, same shit. Did they, um, man? Am I crazy to think Miller wants to fight at three hundred? Right? He wants to. Uh, he you fought. I, am I right? He fought at one hundred, um, two hundred, and he wants to fight at three hundred. That is Miller, right? Yep, because he's Jim fucking Miller. Um, and Felder said, yeah, the way I, he wants to come out of retirement for 300. I got to be honest. I, I mean, I, I know Paul wants to fight again. Iaquinta, I don't know if Al is interested. That's the fight I've been, I feel like we missed was uh, Iaquinta Felder. But I would love to see Felder Al, fight man. Jim Miller too. What's that? I got to ask Al what's up with that if he's interested. Yeah. Because he's slaying it in that fucking real estate business, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes guys just they they go and do something else, and they're really happy. And sometimes people, uh, like I heard from my uh, my good friend Jimmy Rivera, it was nice. I'm going to see him at one of my shows. He's a police officer now. He's doing really well. Listen, man, good for him. Yeah, is he still a martial artist too? And he's doing yes. that. Is he fighting anymore? I don't know if he's still fighting or not. Oh. Jim oh. versus Matt Matt Brown. Brown. Uh, what about that as a fight? Yeah, they did mention that. That's not happening, but they did mention it. it might have. Who knows? But that'd be interesting. But that's at one seventy, so that's interesting too. Do we want that? Well, Jim Mills fought his whole career at one fifty five. You want the guy going up to one seventy to fight fucking Matt Brown with elbows from hell? I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not knocking Jim Miller. Maybe he doesn't want to, doesn't want to diet so much. You know. Yeah, maybe he wants to go up, but I mean, I always like when guys are fighting though. I, I don't, I don't like when they go up just for one fight. Um, oh, Andre oh, Fury! Oh, oh, look oh, at that! We did, we, I didn't know he was in. You didn't tell us. I hope he wasn't waiting wrong. Get him in! Get him in here, Andre yeah. Fury.
Yeah, yeah, yo. What's, what's up, hey, Andre? Andre? What's up, bro? How are you, man? How you guys How you doing? doing? Congrats good, good. on your last fight, dude. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, man. Hell yeah. Man, that, that's fucking great. You were fighting a desperate guy, too. I think he was, am I crazy that he was one and two at the time in the yeah. UFC, and now he's one and three? Like, that, 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 that's a guy who really, really needs a win, and uh, he had a devastating, devastating win over him. Yeah, he, uh, he's good, man. He's, just, he's one of those guys that's dangerous to fight because he's, like you said, he, he looked good on his contender series. He got a good knockout, I think. And then, um, yeah, he's one and two. It's like that doesn't sound – you know, like when that fight got announced, there was pe- – I, I, I did something I don't do very often and, like, read through the comments. And there's people like, oh, Feely's going to kill him. Easy win for Feely. I'm thinking, like, bro, have you fucking seen this guy? Like, yeah. He's a huge 45-er. You know, he, he's got – he's hey, no, sorry. I just got a puppy, and he's being an oh, asshole. That's cute, man. <laughs> there, might be, there might be a lot of that. Dude, he's a year old. My girlfriend was hell-bent on – I wanted to get a puppy, puppy. My girlfriend was hell-bent on saving a shelter dog, which I respect. But he's – so he's still a puppy. He's, like, around a year old, but he's already, like, 110 pounds. Oh, boy. He's a monster, dude. What he's kind of a, dog? What kind of dog? A, an, an Akbosh. So it's like a old, basically take a lab, take a lab head and put it on a wolf. Like it's a monster. It's like an oh, ancient, wow. ancient, like Anatolian shepherd. Basically they there's, you can go on YouTube and find videos of them, like fucking up wolves and coyotes and shit. Like man, what happened if they dealt with a pit bull? They held their own. Maybe I, I don't know, dude. I, I think, I think that depends on the dog, but I think they'd, they'd probably hold their own. He looks here. He looks like a, He's like a, he's he's 110 pounds. He's a monster. That's a cute dog. That looks Very like a cute. Labrador, though. He looks like a lab. Yeah, until you get next to him, or if I sent you a picture of him next to me, like when he sits on my lap, you can't see me. He's like that looks like a cute. Can I see the dog again, really quick, really quick? Yeah, yeah. Say hi, that's boy. a cute. That's a looks like a yeah. cute dog right there. How much Say bigger hi, is he gonna boy. get? I think he'll probably dude. They they said they get up to uh, like a like 140. It's a big dog. And dogs are yeah. just they just they just they're great. They just love you. They just love you. They don't that's yeah. all that's why they got those therapy dogs for people and stuff. Good boy. Yeah, he's uh it's funny, man, because I my my dog passed away recently. And um, so for me, I'm like, you know, I'm being a baby about it. I'm like, man, I don't want another dog. Like my dog just passed away. I'm not I don't want another dog. I want my dog. And my girlfriend is is a sweetheart, she loves animals, and she was like, dude, we're gonna rescue one yada 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 we're gonna go to the pound and i was real resistant to it and then you know this guy she brought this guy we brought this guy home and he's uh man he's awesome he's just way different like my my i'm used to having a bulldog who dude my bulldog would like he wants one walk a day he wants food and he wants to lay around the house that's it this this guy is like right like just because of the breed he is he's like locked in dude he'll he'll run He'll like chase things down. He he'll spend all he wants to spend all day in the front yard just patrolling. Like he's ah. it's just a whole different type of dog, you know. So it's been fun, but it's been challenging. I miss my lazy guy. You know what I mean? I miss my guy who just lays around all day. But yeah, yeah. it's been cool. It's Don't you amazing. like having a dog though? Like it's like a, it's like a burglar alarm. Like I, I've never had a dog, but it's just got to be great. You you know that there's something walking around the house that if somebody yeah. comes in, they're gonna let you know it. Right. I, I do like that. I really, really like that aspect of it. Um, you know, I didn't grow up with dogs. I didn't grow up with animals, having pets really. So my last dog was like, I had him for eight years. That was my best friend. So him passing was really actually, was actually really hard on me. And, uh, yeah, I, I was being a baby about it. You know, I was being my Melissa, my girlfriend was like, you know, we're going to save a dog. We're going to help, you know, we're going to save a, save a pound dog. We're going to save its life and, and give it a good life and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm just like, I'm just along for the ride, whatever, man. I just, I just want my dog back. I've been a crybaby for like three weeks about it. And, um, and then we brought this guy home and now, and now he's like, you know, you can, you can only be, even if you're not an animal person, if you're in close proximity to a dog and you're, you can only be like an asshole for so long before you're like, <laughs> all right, come here. You know, you can't, what are you gonna do? Not pet the dog, not play with the dog. Like it's sitting on your lap. It's wrestling with you. Like you're going to start to love it, you know? So yeah, it's been it's been about a week now with the new dog, and you know, uh, I'm I'm enjoying it. But every time he does something bad, I just look at my girlfriend and go, "Look, he's your dog. Like my dog yeah. has to, he's yours. That's your you deal with it. Goal. That's yours. Yeah. So I'm still being selective selective ownership, but he's cool, man. Um, sorry, he 
we just derailed the whole conversation. Ah, man, dude, <laughs> That's dude, fine. Let me tell you something. I notice a lot of my single friends when they're like, nah, I'm not getting married. I'm not having that kind of relationship. I'm just going to not do that. Not have a family, not have kids. When they get to be around 40, they need that unconditional love yeah. and they get a dog. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, families get it too, but I'm saying for someone to need that unconditional love, they're not just about getting laid anymore. They need something, but they Real, yeah. they, they don't yeah. have that, that other person that loves them. They don't have a child. They don't have anything. Yeah. So they get a dog in that like really, I don't know. I just noticed that same theme with a bunch of my single buddies. Yeah, it's important, man. I think it's cool. I think it also helps teach it helps teach you to be like, it's helped me be more loving and understanding too, because I, I have the tendency sometimes to like be an asshole, you know, like figure it out, like clean up your mess, whatever. And then you have a dog who like legitimately needs you. Like it's a puppy, man. Like it can't yeah. do anything without you. So it's like, you know, it, it, it helps, man. It, it helps a lot. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm super fortunate. I was, I was, I was being kind of a little, I was being kind of a little asshole about getting another dog, but my girl, my girl basically took that matter out of my hands. It was like, no, we're getting him. We're getting this dog. This is it. And we took him home and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy about it. Um, and Andre too, I've, I've been meaning it. I'm glad we got a chance to talk to you. Cause I've been wanting to talk to you since that, that great fight, because uh, I'm not sure if we've asked you this before. I don't remember it, but they were talking uh, during your fight. I think Joe, or uh, they said something about like, you might not have even achieved your full potential yet. Like how, how well you're doing. And then I think DC said that you had commented about your OCD causes you to overthink everything. Yeah. And that was really interesting to me because OCD with athletes, sometimes it, it comes out in forms of rituals and, and how did, how has it affected you negatively? And like, how, how does it, uh, what, what does it do to you? Like when you're training? Um, you know, I, I'm at a place now where instead of trying to like get rid of it or beat it, I, I'm just trying to make it work for me or I'm not trying to, I am making it work for me. Like if I'm going to, if my brain is going to work this way, like I'm going to f- channel it in the right sure. direction. You know? And so for me, like a lot of times it manifests in ways that are positive. Like my coaches know if, if we have a 30 minute mid session or a 45 minute mid session, like it's, it's going to be probably the full hour because the last five minutes are going to be me running the com- a combination and going, nah, one more, nah, one more. Okay. <laughs> We just did three perfect. We got to do five perfect. Okay, we did five, but the, I didn't really like the fifth one. It didn't feel good, so we'll do two more. And we end up on six. Like make it an even ten. Like I will obsess about things, and I can make it a positive, a positive thing. The time, the, the the times where it manifests negatively or has manifested negatively in the past is like is is when you know things get really high stress, high tension. It's the it's two or three days before the fight, and you're trying to control every little single thing, every little variable, and it's like man, fighting is chaos. You got to be at some point, no matter how hard you train or how well you prepare, you got to be ready to just go, all right, fuck it. Like acceptance, radical acceptance. And just go, look, I'm getting into a fist fight, lock in a cage, let it go. What happens, happens. How I feel is how I feel. Like let it rip, you know? And it's hard to get to that point with OCD. Like I've, I've talked to myself out of the flow state before, you know, where I'm, I'm ready to go. And I'm like, well, this thing didn't line up this perfect amount with this time. And you know, the, the certain number of things we did, like literal, like, like if I told you how crazy it got, it would, I, I you'd want to put me in a fucking institution or something. Like I can't even go into how crazy it got to where I think back now, now that I've got a better handle on it. And I, I really recognize what was going on. I think back like, man, I can't believe I even, was able to compete that way. Like, well, were you um, counting or was it reps or what? Like, was I it mean, outside of, outside of fighting? I have these stupid rituals. Like I'm, I'm five minutes late to every training session. Every day I wake up early and I say, today's the day I'm getting out the door, you know, but you check the stove, you check the handle, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I check that. Then I make sure the dog is this. And then by the time I check the front door, the side door, the back window, I'm back at the stove. Cause maybe I forgot something. It's like, dude, by the time I get to my car, I've wasted fucking 12 minutes of my life running through these stupid rituals. And so I have a better grip on that. But yeah, I'm, I'm counting all the time. Like I'm counting when I'm counting when I kiss my girlfriend goodbye, when I pet my dog goodbye, when I check the stove, when I check the door handle, when I'm out the door, I'm counting fucking one. I wash my hands manically. I'm fucking counting the hand washes. Like I don't want to even get too far into it because you guys will think I'm, if anybody ever plays this back, you guys will think I'm out of oh, my mind, man. but you know, it's pretty I, common, I, actually. It's, hey, listen, I, not only do I get it, but if you have a, even a little bit of that and you're in this business, what's rough about this is 
the only thing you really could really is in your control is the preparation. Like, right. Shit. I mean, what, what gets, when you walk to that cage, you're like, all right, there's so many different ways that this could go and that you can't control all that. So, you, you know, it, it can make you crazy thinking about it. It can make you well, fucking nuts. Well, what if I do this? What if he does this? He, what if, you're, you know, there's so many things, yeah. but you just bring it back and you'd be like, all right, I'm going to fight the way I spar. And I worked right. this out in sparring. So you got to try to bring it back. But I'll tell you, I know, I know, I know, I have an idea of what you, you're dealing with there. I, especially if you're a person that likes things a certain way and then you're going in there, it might not go that certain way. And just right. that to give you a mind fuck. Well, yeah, right, and, and logic has no power over it. Like I, I don't, I, I don't have it where it's crippling, but I definitely have it. Like where you yeah. close the door, and it, it, there has to be a brain click. Like once the brain clicks, then it's like, okay, that task yeah. is done. But yep. there's a click, and there's no way to to know when that's gonna happen. Like I could do the ritual three check check, and then all of a sudden it doesn't click. I have to walk back down the hall. Yeah. It's very frustrating, and I've actually at times made myself go, no, just feel uncomfortable, you fuck, yeah. and walk away. You have to and it's hard yourself. to you have to pump yourself. You have to go, look, the fucking stove is like, look, if like, cause you check the stove 16 times already, you're already 10 minutes late to training. Like if the house fucking burns down, it burns down. You're being a pussy, get in the car. Like that's sometimes the only fucking way that you can get going, man. Um, dude, I had a drive. When I, when I fought Calvin Cater, I, we were driving through LA. I fought on the way to fight Calvin Cater. who's was one of, one of the best guys in the world. Um, mm. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking every time we were driving through doubt, we we're driving through LA and I'm looking and every time I saw something green, it, it felt like a good right. omen. And every time I felt, I saw something red, it felt like a bad omen. I'm talking 30, 45 minutes, uh, sorry, maybe two hours before fight time. We're driving to the stadium and I'm fucking worried about whether I'm seeing more green than red. Like this is the fight, the kind of tricks that OCD plays. You know, I actually heard, one of the things that helped me kind of snap out of it and helped me realize like, all right, everybody goes to this to some degree. Sometimes it's more severe than others, but I actually heard a story about GSP and I don't remember where I heard this. There's a story about GSP, how he'd be walking out to the fight, like fucking behind from the curtain to the cage. And he didn't want to step on any shadows as a bad omen. And I heard that and maybe that's bullshit, but I heard it from someone that obviously said it and it stuck with me so maybe i whoever said it tr i trusted her i retained the information but i had the thought okay if it happens to fucking gsp if it happens to these other people like it i gotta man the fuck up it happens to people and i gotta i gotta get to find a way to get over it you know what i mean like yeah it's not it that that's something that helps is like when it when you realize like all right it's not a me thing like i've maybe turned it into a me thing oh yeah, yeah. No, george, i know from season four george was an assistant coach and his buddy was with Pat, Patrick Cote. And I remember he was like in the locker room with us and before Pat had the fight. And Pat, Pat's a very cool customer. He goes, yo, George is a phenomenal fighter, but he's the worst in the corner and shit. <laughs> and then George comes in because George is like, because he gets nervous for you. And, George yeah, is like, yeah. and he's like, uh, he goes, then remember, Patrick, this is not war. You're not going to die. It is a referee. And then Patrick looks at me and he gives a wink. Like, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it was yeah. terrible. But, uh, and I knew that going in when I had the yeah. fight. Coach. I'm like, all right, I know this guy's phenomenal, but he's only human. I know his yeah. mind. Right. You know, he's afraid. Yeah. Is there like everybody else and getting hurt and everybody. whatever else? So I don't know. I remember thinking that going in, like this guy is just human. He's got the yeah. same face as everybody else. For sure. So, yeah, I mean, everybody's got that, especially in the game that we're in, man. Right. For yeah. I, I think the other thing that helped me was it was like uh, this this fight. I felt good because I finally just I felt so good in the cage because I remember thinking like I said to myself specifically, however I feel is how I feel. Right. Like if I feel amped up, if I feel ready to fucking kill somebody, then that's how I feel. And if I feel as calm as I do having a conversation with you guys, then that's how I feel. But however I feel like I'm going to I'm going to I've done this fucking 30 something times I've done this my whole life. Like I'm, I've been a professional fighter since I was nine, since 2009. Like. I'm going to show up to the I'm going to show up to the arena. I'm going to say hi to everybody. Give everybody a hug. Thank all the UFC people, because I, I try to make a point to. Tell them I appreciate them because they do. There's a lot of shit that goes behind the scenes that we don't see that, that you know, a lot of the UFC employees do it to, to help the show go. So I'm going to walk in. I'm going to say hi, everybody. I'm going to be friendly. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to 
hit my mitts. I'm going to thank my coaches. I'm going to practice gratitude. I'm going to do all the things that I do before my fight. And then however I feel when they say, all right, Andre, time to go. When they, when they tell you it's time to roll, however I feel is how I feel. And I'm not going to try to fucking amp myself up and I'm not going to try to calm myself down. And whatever the fuck happens is what happens. And I finally just told myself that and, and I've never felt better. Like I've legitimately never felt better. It was such a good feeling. You looked really relaxed. And I think they were even saying that, uh, that you just looked comfortable. Your movements were very relaxed. Uh, you didn't look tense at all. So maybe that, uh, it's nice to know that you actually felt as, as comfortable as you looked. Yeah, it felt, it felt good. I think there've been times where, I think there've been times where, like I said, I've talked myself out of feeling good. Like I've had times where, everything's gone perfect. And then I'm like, Oh, but I don't feel amped up. Like, I got to get myself amped up. And I think that a huge part of my performances before when I, when I like, there've been poor performances where I've performed well and where I haven't. And I think that that inconsistency and the times where I haven't performed as well as I want, that comes from the discrepancy in how I feel and how I think I should feel and trying to force that, like get amped up or, or, or get calmed down or get this or get that. Or you got to feel, it's like, bro, the work's done. The hay's in the barn. You've been doing this your whole life and you busted your ass for eight weeks. When they say time to fight, you're going to be ready to fight. And just trusting that however you feel is how you feel was a, was a huge, a huge moment for me, man. It was, it was fucking huge. Tell me, well, Andre, are you with the clothing and the music? I know you were into both of that. Are you yeah. still doing that? Are you still doing both of those things? Yeah, a little bit. The, the clothing stuff is, is, is kind of more just, I just like making tea. Uh, the clothing thing is simple. Like, Everybody who was making fight t-shirts, they were ugly as hell. And okay. I wanted to make fight. I wanted to make t-shirts. If, if I'm going to have a fight t-shirt, I want it to be something that I can, th I can toss you. Go, oh, I got a shirt for you. And you'll actually wear it. Okay. To go, to go grab a drink at the bar. Not something that you're like, ah, oh, yeah, it's a, I'm wearing it. Cause my friend's fighting tonight. Like, right. All that. What I'm, what, what, I mean, you'll remember this, like now fighting has like a style and, and there's a lot of guys, I think like me and Cheeto and, and Sean O'Malley and guy and Stylebender and guys who have a style and guys who are into things outside of fighting and have have are, are kind of cool. But yeah. dude, it was it was rough in the beginning. It was like rhinestone affliction shirts and shit. Like so, <laughs> growing up seeing all that, I'm like I'm like look at dude. Growing up and seeing that, I'm like look if I'm gonna if, if we're gonna do fight shirts, I'm gonna make them something that people actually want to wear. So the, the the shirts are are mostly just because I like to make stuff that gets my friends stoked and, you know, rep the crew and anybody who buys shirts, I appreciate it. Outcastunderdogs.com. Like okay. if you, if you, if you buy it, it's, 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 I appreciate it, but that's kind of just a side thing that that's fun to do. Music is a real, is a real passion project for me. Um, I'm in a band called born breach and we're dropping new music. We just dropped some shit on Spotify and iTunes. Um, I love making music. We just played a show. I grew up going to punk shows and, I love, I love hip hop. I love punk. I, I love music. So being able to make music and have that creative outlet is, is cool, you know, because it's a, it's a, it's an outlet for energy, but it's, it's, it's about having fun. Like fighting is performance based. Like fighting is only fun when you fucking win. Right. Yeah. Like we, we play a show. It doesn't matter if you fuck up. Like if the crowd's moving and jumping and singing along, that's a win. So the out, music's a passion project. Making shirts and clothing is just kind of something on the side, but um, fighting takes precedent over everything, man. Fight, fighting really is like, it takes up every, everything, you know, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Andre, uh, great having you on, man. Thank you for, uh, I was really, I couldn't wait to ask you about that OCD. Thanks for such a, it was really honest and, uh, really, Appreciate really interesting it. to hear. And, um, congrats on that fight, man. It was a great Thank fight, a very shit, devastating yeah. knockout. And I can't wait to see you fighting again, man. You just, uh, you're really <laughs> exciting. And I feel like I've been watching you for 20 years. Uh, it's hard to believe you're only 33, so I'm sure you have a lot of years left. Yeah, I see. I'm um, Jim Miller just keeps winning at like 40 years old. You guys might be stuck with me in a decade, dude. It's insane. Fucking, we we're just talking about Jim Miller. Um, he's, he's the man. He's the man. He really yeah, is. Appreciate you guys. We'll hey, have you on again you, if you want. Thanks, Thanks boys. buddy. Okay. All right, take, take care. care. Good luck with the dog. Good luck with the dog. I love that. Yeah, that's a that's a cute dog, but uh, I, I love him. I think he's really an honest guy. He's a very very interesting guy. And he was listen, fun show. You know, yeah. like, nice nice to meet uh, get Farid in here. That was nice. Yeah, Farid uh, Basharat. Thank you. Know him a little bit. And Jimmy, I will be off the next show. I'll be out spreading joy. You know. Oh.
and I'll be back by uh, the end of the week or late next week. But uh, I'll be back for the next show next Monday, you know. I want to uh, promote two two things. Uh, now you know I'm on tour. A um, bunch of dates coming up. Uh, I got California, Petaluma, Monterey, Santa Cruz, Dallas, Houston, Texas. I'm doing Joe's Club in uh, in March down in uh, Austin. I got Oklahoma City. I got Illinois, Kentucky. Uh, just go check out my website uh, if you want dates. And my wife and I have a YouTube page. We just kind of see what our life is like. There's no message. It's just us at Nikki and Jim NYC, if you wish, on YouTube. So sweet. Thank All you. right. You know me. Just me. I'm out of here. Jimmy, miss you and love you already. What? No. Love yes, you me. Already. Well, I miss no. you and, and miss you, yes. You didn't say love you, though. Uh, I do love you. Strong like? I, I love. Thank you. All right, Jimmy. I told you that was weird. I'll talk to you by next week, Jimmy. Uh, I'll see you. Have a safe travels, my love. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye, Jimmy. You're the best. I'll see you soon, dear.